Well, color we try to be as, as loyal as possible, but you see the color changes if you have a torch light. If you have a flickering torch, you have this yellow and orange and whatever lights uh, in it. So I was always a little bit more with a tendency towards this kind of color rendering later on. But I tried to be as, as correct as I saw it with my own eyes. I didn't try to do any fancy stuff. Um, and there was another... Yes, we had this, you see the, the light panels. What we did um, was that, uh, let's say the, the camera would film a niche here in front of, of me. But when I, in what I did, I orchestrated the three lights and I said, everybody moves now to the left. So we would move to the left and the shadow in the niche would grow longer and longer and longer and almost cover the, the horse that was looking there. So we, we moved sideways. We moved sideways and, and the fade outs are never a technical fade out. Um, the fade outs are always, I would say, now three, two, one, fade slowly and we would all fade our lights away from it and we would create a natural fade, not a technical fade. So that was always clear this should be the principle of, of doing it. But we learned it uh, pretty much on the first day. How should we do it? And I observed it was beautiful to do it uh, by moving parallel, uh, uh, perpendicular to to the gaze of the camera, I would move the lights in either direction, and I would I would somehow blend them away and and hide the light. Yes. I guess <coughs> out of the beautiful places that you've taken um, your viewers throughout your career, how did this one measure up to the rest? And what would you say is one of the most fantastical you've been to or, or experienced? Uh, the great locations that I had met. Well, some of them do not exist anymore, like in Signs of Life. There is a valley uh, in, on the island of Crete, and you looked uh, high up in the mountains, and I, I arrived there when I was 15, and I looked down into, the, into this valley, and I thought instantly I was insane, because there were 15,000 windmills. 15,000, or 10,000, 10, the valley of 10,000 windmills. All of them, actually, I learned later, pumping up water into a fertile, high uh, plateau. And it's so beyond, and, and, and this image was so strong in me that I created a whole film around it, Signs of Life, the first long feature film. Uh, for example, uh, Urubamba Valley in Peru, Machu Picchu, this kind of area, where I've returned a couple of times. And there are many, many places uh, but uh, you should not, you should not really try to search the beauty of the postcard beauty of of these places. It's always something else. The, the landscapes in my films are always always something like an inner quality of, of human beings. It's not a postcard background as you see it on TV commercials where they go into the wild uh, mountains of China or at the Yangtze or so. But they use it only as a backdrop to enhance the product. In my case, a landscape is always on, has almost the quality of inner landscapes. When I show the jungle, the jungle is a place of, of, of fever dreams. And the, the Sahara Desert, the solitude of a desert. So it's almost human qualities in, in them. Same thing with, with animals, some frightening, strange, qualities in chicken that dance, the barn shuttle dance, like in Stroshek at the end, and they can, nobody can stop them. Police cannot stop them anymore. Huh? It's, I mean, so it's, it's, uh, it's always an ensemble of, of many things, and very often, uh, and I've seen that now when I was shooting in the, two days ago I was still shooting in Texas, uh, Death Row, and I, I was discussing in the car when we drove to Huntsville where they actually execute them. 
and we discussed the title and, and somehow I came up, I don't know, out of the blue, I said, it's always like gazing into the abyss, into the abyss of the, of the human soul. And all of a sudden I thought, well, that could have been the, the, the title for the cave film, gazing into, the, into an abyss. Uh, it's always a, a look very deep into our human condition. And, and you just name it if you look at Aguirre, the Wrath of God, or Caspar Hauser, or a bad lieutenant, it's always uh, trying to look very deep into what, what constitutes a human soul. So, gazing into the abyss uh, could be the title of, death, of my death row project. It could have been the title uh, of, uh, of this film you just saw. It could have been the title of Aguirre, the Wrath of God, maybe. So it's always not, not so much looking horizontally at something and, and looking, it's a vertical look down into, into the, the, the deep uh, recesses of our, of our soul. We've got time for one more question. Maybe over there. Yes, I'm sorry that I have to ignore.